Another application of the uniform flow equation is the design of urban drainage systems. So in this lesson, we will introduce the hydraulics of sewers and present some basic concepts for the design. Sewers generally have a closed cross section and are placed below the ground level. The cross section can be rectangular, circular, ovoid or any shape. One common feature is the fact that the flow in a sewer network is a free surface flow, not a pressurized flow mainly to prevent the risk of leakage and contamination of the surrounding ground. So the pipe cross-section is never completely filled. We will see later that if the flow becomes pressurized, severe instabilities can occur. Let us consider the case of a circular cross-section of diameter D. If the water in the pipe, if the, if the water depth in the pipe is H, we can express h as a function of angle theta as follows. In this expression, r0 is the pipe radius. We can also express the wetted area by adding the green and yellow areas like this. And finally, the wetted perimeter p, highlighted in red here, can also be expressed as a function of theta. So, we have expressed all our main geometrical variables as function of the angle theta, and we will now be able to use these values in the Manning equation. The Manning equation for the discharge is written here. So we have the standard formulation, and if we replace A and P by the expressions found in equations 2 and 3, after some manipulations, we obtain the final expression here. There is one particular case that can be identified. When theta is just equal to zero, the pipe is full, but the flow is not yet a pressurized flow. The pressure at the top of the pipe is still the atmospheric pressure. The discharge, written in equation 5 here, is called the pipe full discharge and it is denoted QF. Using equation 4, we can also calculate the discharge corresponding to different values of theta that represent different depths h. And from equation 4 and 5, we can write the ratio between Q and QF, which depends only on theta as we can see in the resulting expression. So equation 6 is independent from the pipe diameter and from the roughness. We will therefore use a non-dimensional representation of this HQ relation by representing the ratio Q over QF as a function of the ratio H over D. Both ratios are function of theta. So the relationship between H over D and Q over QF may be constructed from values of theta corresponding to different fillings of the pipe. This is the blue curve illustrated here. We can see that, maybe surprisingly, the maximum discharge does not correspond to the full pipe discharge QF. The maximum discharge occurs at a depth equal to 0.94d and has a value equal to 1.076 QF. We also see that the discharge QF is already obtained for a depth here equal to 0.82 D, so for a depth that is well below the full possible depth. How can this be explained? Remember that the uniform flow equation is the result of an equilibrium between a driving force, that is the gravity entraining the mass of water downslope, and the friction forces that tend to slow down the flow. The driving force related to the mass of water is represented by the wetted area A, while the braking force is represented by the wetted perimeter P, along which the friction is exerted. So, close to the full filling of the pipe, a small increase in H will result in a small increase in A, but in a large increase of P. 
This explains the presence of a maximum in the discharge curve. We can calculate the evolution of the velocity in the same way and obtain the red curve that also presents a maximum. We can observe something that is really interesting for urban sewage. When Q is about 10% of QF, so here, we have here the curve. For this discharge, V is about 64% of VF. And when the discharge is only 1% of the full discharge, so this value here, V is still 32% of VF, although Q is very small. This particular feature allows preventing deposition of sediments even for small discharges and provides a kind of self-cleansing of the pipe. So from these equations, it is easy to calculate the discharge corresponding to a given depth, working by the intermediate value of theta. A more complex problem is to calculate the uniform depth corresponding to a given discharge. To this end, we will isolate the highest power of theta to write this equation here, that will be then solved by iterations. Let us illustrate this by an example. We have a concrete pipe of 1 meter diameter installed with a bottom slope of 0.2%. The mining friction coefficient is 0.014. We want to check if this pipe can accept a discharge of 800 liter per second. So the first step is to check the possible full, um, pipe full discharge of this pipe. Indeed, we know that this value is not the maximum possible discharge, but it is close to it. So it is a very useful value in the design of sewers, as it can be calculated easily without any iterations. In the present case, we find a value of 996 liter per second. So we conclude that the pipe ca can indeed receive a flow of 800 liter per second without becoming pressurized. The next step is to determine the depth at which the flow will establish itself for the discharge of 800 liter per second. This depth is calculated using this formula by iterating on the value of theta. The results of the iterations are indicated in the table. In order to ease the convergence of the iterations, it is better to start from a first guess corresponding to a depth in the correct part of the pipe, for example, below, uh, below here or above R0. In this case, we start above R0 with theta equal to 45 degree, and we converge to a value of 69 degree corresponding to a depth of 67.9 centimeter. Another possible question is the design of the pipe, that is, finding the diameter required for a given discharge. Again, we start with the pipe full discharge equation that will provide a value, a value of the radius that is on the side of the security, as we know that larger discharges are still possible. So here we find a radius of uh, 46.1 cm. For this value, we can then calculate by iterations the angle theta and the uniform depth. In practice, of course, we wouldn't just take this value of the pipe diameter. It will rather be rounded to the ne nearest entire value available on the market of precast elements, for example. In practice, also in urban drainage hydraulics, other formulas like the Chazy formula are often used, as illustrated in this table, with different values of the Chazy coefficient according to the type of sewer, combined or separate sanitary sewers. In separate sanitary sewers, only wastewater is collected, and stormwater runoff is collected in separate storm drains. 
The reason to choose for a separate system is that sewage treatment is less effective when sanitary waste is diluted with storm water. Interestingly, we can note that this value in fact just corresponds to the manning coefficient of concrete. So it seems to be a specially adapted formula, but in fact it is just the classical manning equation with the friction coefficient of concrete. The design of a sewer pipe is not restricted to the pipe diameter, of course. We also need to account for some practical constraints. The flow velocity in the sewers has to be such that the suspended materials in sewage are not silted up. That is, the velocity should be sufficient to cause automatic self-cleansing effect and avoid sedimentation. The velocity should also be limited to 2 or 3 meters per second to prevent attrition of the pipe. There are also some constraints on the slope. If it's too small, it will, it will be impossible to install the pipe with a sufficient accuracy. But if, it's, if it is too large, it might induce excessive excavation costs. Then, a minimum diameter is required to avoid obstruction by larger objects that might end up in the pipe. Finally, inspection manholes should be installed every 10 to 35 meter on average. These also allow an adjustment of the pipe slope to the ground or street level. The manholes are also locations where a possible overpressure can be dissipated. That can happen, for example, in the case of very heavy rains. However, a pressurized flow in a sewer should in principle be avoided. Here is an example of an accident that occurred at the time of the construction of Louvain-la-Neuve, just a few days before the inauguration of the railway. Due to an obstruction in the sewer pipe, as illustrated here, the flow went under pressure and the manhole exploded due to the sudden release of the excess pressure. So finally, to conclude, we can recall that the discharge to be evacuated in the storm sewers can be calculated using the rational method recalled here. Then, the diameter of the pipe needed to evacuate this discharge is calculated using a full pipe discharge. The actual filling of the pipe is determined by iterations and from there the actual velocity can be verified. Of course this is valid for one sewer pipe but an actual sewer system is much more complex than only pipes and manholes. But this is another story. Thank you for your attention.